If you choose to keep something that you already have instead of getting something new and shiny, then doesn't that lead to a lot of changes? Hi guys, I'm Owen of Van Trekking Lifestyle. Today we're going to talk about how that applies when you decide not to buy a new Revel, but instead keep your two-year-old Travato van. This Travato van has been an awesome part of our adventures over the last two years, but during that time technology has come along leaps and bounds. So we almost bought a Winnebago Revel, but we didn't. We figured we could spend just a little money on this Travato and make it better. One of the things that was kind of driving the decision to consider getting a Revel instead was four-wheel drive. But also, there were several things on this van that needed to be repaired. The first of which were the tires. We had Cooper AT3s on the van before, and those tires rode on the Dalton Highway all the way to the Arctic Ocean. But we didn't know how rough of a ride and how noisy of a ride it was until we put our Michelin tires on. Wow, that sure made a huge difference. If you ask anyone who owns a Travato, or heck, for that matter, anyone who owns a Promaster, the radio that ships in these things, it's a piece of crap. There's very little about it that we like at all. It does sound okay, which is actually a, a plus, but everything else about it, from the operating system to all the selections that you can make to the, the way the thing starts up, and it, there's just so many things about it that we don't like. One specifically is tied to the backup camera. The quality of the image that you see from the backup camera for the Travato it's probably less safe than just using your mirror out the side. You certainly can't tell what's behind you with it. And that's an issue, especially when you compare it to what you can see in a backup camera from say a Mercedes based Revel or one of those, that thing is awesome. It's a huge screen and what you see is crystal clear. That's always been an issue for us. And it was one of the things that really drew me to the Revel. I know that's stupid. Um, Apple CarPlay, I know that's stupid too, but you know, we're so tied to our iPhone, the fact that we had Apple CarPlay and that thing was a big plus. We didn't add Apple CarPlay to the van, but we did add a really cool option to allow us to see when we back up. It's actually a screen that connects directly to the mirror. It covers up the mirror, but you don't need it anyway because you, all you're seeing is what's in the back of the van. You can't see out it. And so it connects there and we can see what's behind the van. It's a really wide view. We can see when people are passing us. We can see when we're backing up and it serves as a dash cam. Perfect for us. And it solves that issue for the Travato for less than $150, a lot less expensive than a Rebel. The other issue we've had with our van is around our house batteries. They're a little over two years old. Well, we've owned them for over two years old. They're actually almost three years old now, and they're losing their life. They won't last overnight. So the Rebel's 250 amp hour lithium battery setup for the 2021, well, it caught our attention. But for a lot less money, we've been able to add lithium batteries to our Travato. And thanks specifically to Scott and other people just like him who have done this upgrade and posted pictures and videos and notes about how to do it on the Travato owners and wannabe site and the Travato base camp site. It's not that difficult of a task to complete. First, we had to decide what batteries to get. That was made pretty easy when Costco sent us an email and said the ones we were considering, the Lion Energy batteries, we're on sale for $1,300 for two of them. Okay, that made that decision. They're on their way now. In fact, the UPS driver is gonna arrive any minute now with that package, and I'm pretty excited about that. Next, we had to remove the bed and the bed platform on the passenger side and the wall that separates the storage area from the water tank and the electronics area there. That's not that hard to do, just a few screws and you've got access to that. And then the most daunting task, at least for me, especially with Lynn worried about it, we need to drill a few holes through the floor of the van and run cables back to the black box and the negative post of the van so we can connect up these new lithium batteries. And then the final step is to connect a battery monitor that will allow us to see how the batteries are actually doing overnight and as they're charging. And that's pretty much it. Put the bed back together, 
charge the batteries up, and we're ready to have 210 amp hours of lithium power, but we also kept the 200 amp hours of AGMs underneath the van for now. So we're leaving on this trip with quite a bit of self-made electricity, allowing us to boondock and dry camp for about as long as we want to. And as we travel, we'll let you know how these batteries are working out because it's a pretty inexpensive option to add really cool technology to your van. We've added a few more minor updates to the van that we'll share with you as we travel on this damn trip, which we leave for tomorrow. What's a damn trip? Well, we'll explain that to you tomorrow as we leave. Thanks for being part of our journey. If you're like us, do what excites you a lot and scares you a little as you get older. Lynn, Maggie, and I really appreciate you being part of this journey. If you want to keep up with this trip we're getting ready to take, click on the subscribe button. Click on the little notification bell and YouTube will let you know when we post one of these daily vlogs. Until then, we'll see you down the road. Happy tales.